So section 2.4 is on rates of change and tangent lines. Okay, so like I was saying, this is a little bit of a review of what we did in chapter P, if you guys remember. So rates of change, um, we found the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so, so as mentioned before, one of the first problems in calculus was the tangent line program. So let's revisit this. Okay, so it says find the average rate of change of the function f of x equals x cubed minus x squared over the interval 1 to 2. Alright, so when you see average rate of change, you automatically think slope. Okay, so it's f of 2 minus f of 1 all over 2 minus 1. All it is is the slope. Okay, so you'll have multiple choice questions that will actually say, find the average rate of change of this function on this interval. And you'll be like, woohoo, this is really easy. All right, so you're just finding the slope. So f of 2, you go in, we plug in 2, so we get 8 minus 4, so it's 4. So f of 2 is 4, f of 1 is 0, did you guys see that? I guess you could also look at your picture too. Alright, over 2 minus 1, so it's 4 over 1, which is 4. Okay, so the average rate of change is 4. Now what you're finding is basically the slope between two points on a particular curve. So here's the curve. So you just find the slope between the two points. Okay, but let's say I wanted to actually find the slope at 1.5, so directly between them. So at 1.5 right here, and I want to find the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of the line that just barely touches that curve. Okay, that's a little bit harder to do. Okay, so what we end up doing is we, we take points that get closer and closer to 1.5. So maybe you could go on both sides. You could do 1.4 and 1.6. And then you can do 1.45 and 1.55, you see what I'm saying? And you just kind of like sandwich around that 1.5 and get closer and closer until your points are the same thing. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's do a simpler problem than that. Um, so let's do uh, x squared. So if I have y equals x squared, and I want to find the slope at exactly 3. So I want to find the slope of the tangent line right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two points to compute it. Okay, so I'm going to find the point at 3. So that's 3 comma, what's the y value? Not a hard question. 9. Nine. All right, and I'm going to pick a, a x value that's really, really close to 3. Okay, so I'm going to do 3 and then 3 plus h. So that's going to be my little h. So here was 3, and I'm going to have 3 plus h right next to it. So I don't know what h is, it's just really tiny. Okay, and that's going to be this point up here. So that's going to be 3 comma whatever f of 3 plus h is. So I guess g, g of 3 plus h. So I let it be g, didn't I? Alright, so let's say I was just finding the slope between those two points. So we have two points. 3 comma 9 and 3 comma g of 3 plus h. Oh, not 3 comma. What am I doing? 3 plus h comma. Could have gotten a bonus point. Where are you? Where are you like, where's the h? 3 plus h comma g of 3 plus h. All right, so let's find the slope. Okay, so my slope is going to be whatever g of 3 plus h is minus g of 3, which was 9, over 3 plus h, minus 3. Wait, how did you get g of 3 plus h? Okay, g of 3 plus h is saying whatever your function is, we're going to plug 3 plus h in for the function. So what it's really going to be is 3 plus h squared. Is that what you're wondering? Okay. Alright, the 3 and minus 3 cancel, so you get h on the bottom. You can see how I got the 3 plus h squared. Your function was x squared. You plugged in 3 plus h in for x. All right, so if you want to be in my good graces, you will not say that that is 9 plus h squared. I'm pretty sure it's not. So what's it going to be? <laughs> I'm hearing pieces of it. I heard a 9, I heard a 6h, and I heard an h squared. And putting that all together is 9 plus 6h, 6h squared. 
Oh, because it's 3 plus h and then minus 3, so the 3 and the oh, 3 cancel. Mm -hmm. So over h. And then every time you do these problems, this will happen. Your numbers, so just the plain numbers, the constants, will cancel each other out. So see how you have 9 and then you have minus 9, so those are gone. Right, so I get 6h over h squared, or 6h plus h squared over h. So 6h plus h squared divided by h. So I take that h into both pieces. All right, so I get 6 plus h. Okay, so now you're going to take your fingers, and you're going to point at those two points. So we're pointing in the air at those two points, and then your fingers are going to move together, together, together until they are the same point. Yeah, isn't that weird? Moving them together so that it's the same point, and then you're finding the slope between a point and itself. Weird. But that's what calculus is. It's weird. So we take the limit as h goes to 0 of 6 plus h. So basically this distance, it gets closer and closer and closer to 3, and it becomes 6. Because as h goes to 0, as you plug in 0 there. So at first, you were not able to plug in 0 because you would have just had the point 3, 9 in itself, 3, 9. So how can you possibly find the slope between a point and itself, right? But you actually can if you take the limit as h goes to 0. Mind blown. All right, so it says the slope at x equals 3 is 6. Write an equation for the tangent line at 3. So your point is 3, 9 still. So you have the slope, you have the point, so remember this is the way you write it, point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So 6 times x minus 3 equals y minus 9. That's it. Leave it like that. Okay, so let's try another one. So find the instantaneous rate of change for f of t at uh, f of t equals 3t squared minus 2 at t equals 4. Write the equation of the tangent line. We're not allowed to use derivatives. No, you aren't. Don't be, oh, I'm so smart. I learned derivatives in physics. I know exactly what we're doing. No, you have to do the long one until I teach you shortcuts. Terrible. Oh, whatever. You'll live. All right. So, we have f of t equals 3t squared minus 2. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope between uh, 4 and a little bit more than 4. So I'm going to do 4 comma whatever f of 4 is, and 4 plus h comma whatever f of 4 plus h is. I'm finding the slope between those two points. Okay, so it's f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 all over 4 plus h minus 4. Okay, so that's what we're finding. If I have 4 plus h and I plug it in for t in this case, and don't worry if it says t, it's not a parametric equation or anything that you learn in pre-calc, it's just another variable. t is the same as x. All right, so I'm going to plug it in for t in this equation. So you're going to have 3 times 4 plus h squared minus 2. That's the first part. All right, but then you need to subtract out f of 4. So here's where everybody always makes their mistake. So what I want you to do is put brackets around each piece. Right, because you're subtracting out f of 4. So if you just write f of 4 as 3 times 4 squared minus 2, and then forget those brackets, do you see where people make the mistake? Yeah. yeah, so that's why I told you that the numbers, the constants, will always cancel each other out. They aren't. You're doing something wrong. All right, over 4 plus h minus 4, so you get h. So I get 3 times, foil it out, minus 2, minus, let's see, that's going to be 48 minus 2 in parentheses. So I have to foil this 4 plus h squared part. Now, don't feel bad if you have to write it out. When I was in high school, I always wrote it out. I wasn't some super genius that just could do that quickly. All right, so 4 plus h times 4 plus h is going to be 16 plus 8h plus h squared. All right, and it's still all over h. Don't forget that. 
So I get 48 plus 24h plus 3h squared minus 2 minus 46 all over h. So then I have my 48 minus the 2 minus the 46. Those all go away. And that, like I said, that should happen. The number should go away. All right, and then I get 24h plus 3h squared divided by h. So an h will go in each piece. And it's magic. You end up with 24 plus 3h. Okay, now you're taking it as h goes to 0. So as the two points that you originally had get so close that they're indistinguishable. So they become the same point. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 24 plus 3h is equal to 24. Okay, that is the slope at exactly 4. Okay, so that's your slope. So your equation of your tangent line is y minus, so what did we say that point was? So at 4 it was uh, 46. So we had 4 comma 46 as our point. So y minus 46 equals 24 times x minus 4. Um, I plugged into the original equation. I plugged 4 in to find the y value that went with it. I got it from right here. See where I'm circling. It's always that last little bit. All right, so it says occasionally you're going to see a question that asks for a normal line. Okay? So if you have a normal line, all it is is it's perpendicular to the tangent line. Okay, so here's what a graph would look like. So let's say I have some kind of curve. I would have some kind of tangent line. This isn't for this particular problem. A normal line ends up being perpendicular. So it goes through like that. Okay, and you use this a lot in physics when you talk about like gradients. I was wowing all my friends in Colorado as we talked about hiking up the mountain and the different gradients and why you have to go. Like when you go down a mountain, you zigzag. You know what I'm talking about? You don't just go straight down. <laughs> it's really steep. Walking, walking, yeah, actually. I was not skiing, I was walking. <laughs> yeah, skiing too, you go. Yeah, because you don't want to fall. Yeah. All right, so. All right, here we go. So write an equation for the normal line to the curve of f of x equals 2 minus x squared x equals 4. So go ahead and do that process. So find the tangent line. Doing the same <laughs> All right. So we have uh, we're going between four and four plus h, right? So I'm going to have f of four plus h minus f of four all over four plus h minus four. All right, so we get 2 minus 4 plus h squared, so that's the first bet, minus f of 4. Can you guys do f of 4 in your head? What is it? Negative 14. So if you can do it in your head, that's fine. All over 4 plus h minus 4, so it ends up being just h. Okay, so I get 2 minus, make sure you keep it in parentheses because you're subtracting out this entire product. Do not say 16 plus h squared. Pet peeve, right? Ryan J. All right, so 16 plus 8h plus h squared. I wrote that really tiny. All right, and then minus a negative 14, so really plus 14. All over h. So I have 2 minus 16 minus 8h minus h squared my, uh, plus 14. Lots of minuses over h. And like I said, the number should always, the constant should always go away. So you have 2 minus 16, that's negative 14, plus a 14. So when you take the h into both pieces, you get negative 8 minus h. Did you guys get that? Now we take the limit as h goes to 0. Now really, 
when you start doing these all the time, you're going to write limit in front of all of those steps, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so I get uh, negative h minus h, it ends up being negative h. So that's your slope. So my slope is m equals negative 8. My point, right, if you plug in 4, we got negative 14. Okay, so that would be for your tangent line. We want for the normal line. So what's the only difference? Uh, inverse. Yeah. Inverse. What do you mean by inverse? It's 1 over. 1 over. So and change the sign. And change the sign, right. Putting it all together. So flip it. So instead of being negative 8, it's negative 1 over 8, right, and make it opposite sign. So opposite reciprocal. So your slope isn't negative 8. It's actually positive 1 8. So let's use that for the normal line, right? So it's y minus negative 14, so plus 14 equals m, so 1 eighth, times x minus 4. And that's how we leave it. So if you simplify further and mess it up, you miss all the points on your AP test. So leave it like that. All right, do we feel good about this section? It's pretty easy. Now your homework, a lot of them are just find the average rate of change. Isn't it nice when I say find the average rate of change? What does that mean? Find the slope. So like half your problems, I would say two-thirds of your problems are find the slope between these two points. That's easy enough. And then there's a couple there where you have to do the difference question, which is what this is. All right.